Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome again to my YouTube channel, Eric Broadus YouTube. I'd say welcome again to my YouTube channel, Eric Broadus YouTube. And in this video, this is part of a continuing series of um, commissioned um, officer programs in the United States Coast Guard. And this right here is the end of um, this particular segment of career fields for the United States um, Coast Guard for those that want to be commissioned officers. Now, there is another section for health professionals, those that um, want to be commissioned officers and serve in the um, health, you know, um, you know, healthcare industry or the medical. So. I will, that's a, on another part that I will do, but this is the end for these particular um, pathways to the United States Coast Guard. And I will have um, other military content coming out, so I won't just be sticking with the United States Coast Guard, but I will, um, you know, deal with other topics and with other branches of service um, as well. So, <laughs> but I'm making sure that I go through this as I promised to... Um, some subscribers that I would and they had an interest in it so I'm following through on, through on this one but there will be other military content and other non-military um, topics that I will um, do on this um, particular channel but anyway let's get into it for this one this is um prior trained military officer um, um, programs okay and this right here is for um, any current or former military officers that um, they desire to be commissioned as an officer in the United States Coast Guard. So, um, for any of you that may be an officer in another branch of service, um, this is kind of like your chance to um, to basically kind of switch over and and transfer from your branch of service, and you have to obviously go through the academy or the schools and stuff like that. Or for anyone that um, was a former military officer and that wants to become an officer, a commissioned officer in the United States Coast Guard. So this program is definitely uh, applicable to you as well as um, for those that are in, enlisted. All right, let's get into it. Okay, and I will just use the acronym PTMO, you know, and obviously you know that's for prior um, military you know, officers, you know, prior trained military officers, so PT. Excuse me, PTMO. All right, initial assignments and training. PTMOs, obviously, they will work with a Coast Guard assignment officer. And once they are selected, the assignment officer will review the individual's education, and their experience, qualifications. And also, in addition to that, they will receive a, um, as I said, a dream sheet as with the other um, pathways for commissioned officers. And they can fill out the particular choices of where they like to serve upon graduation of the course and the Coast Guard will take into consideration, but they will first take a look and see what the Coast Guard's needs are first, where this individual needs to be placed at, and if the individual's expressed um, desires line up with what the Coast Guard needs, then um, they will receive um, their top choices of assignment. But as with the other programs, um, the DCO school they will be going to is in New London, Connecticut. And um, basically, the individuals like the other um, programs, they will be sent to their initial duty station. And then um, they will be shipped out, I believe, like something like 30 days, something like that. They um, get orders and to attend this um, direct commissioned officer. Yeah, um, school or I'll just say academy but you know you get the gist of it to attend this DCO course for four weeks and in this course they obviously will be um, get the initial indoctrination of you know Coast Guard tradition culture and the customs and what they need to learn but they will also um, receive um, specific training to whatever rate that they are going to be in and then they will be upon graduation they're sent back to the initial duty station to begin um, service as a commissioned officer in the Coast Guard. Now, for this particular career path, okay, PTMOs can anticipate 
broadening their experience within the community of their initial assignment, with increasing levels of leadership and management exposure with progression rank. Okay, and likewise, PTMO officers have opportunities for special assignments and operational assignments. So, as I said before in previous videos, you know, take advantage of um, these particular um, leadership, you know, ad advancements or chances to grow your career, you know, in the in the military and as well, definitely in the Coast Guard. So, for you guys that are going to be commissioned officers in the Coast Guard, take advantage of these opportunities um you being a commissioned officer you are a, a permanent leader and you serve at the strategic level so you will have enlisted that will be of uh, at some at pretty pretty quickly will be up under you even if you are a lower grade um officer you will have enlisted you know that you will be working with and that will be um under your command so take advantage of these opportunities, the schooling, um, the actual um, special duty assignments, the assignments that they give you to get excellent um, work experience and leadership and management experiences. Um, very crucial, especially for officers and the operational assignments as well, because you guys operate from a strategic level. So take advantage of it. PTMO eligibility requirements. Now. Um, you can't you can't be younger than 21 so, and not older than 41. So 21 to 41 is the um, are the um, are the age ranges and are the um, are the limits. You know that's the youngest you can be, and you can't be any older than 41. Okay, for character standards, okay, you have to have um, impeccable character. You know. Um, your character speaks for you and it will render you an eligible for this particular program okay applicants currently in the Coast Guard right are ineligible for commissioning if in 36 months meaning three years prior to their first um, direct commissioning officer um, class panel date in, uh, in which they've been selected they have been convicted by a court martial been awarded non-judicial punishments such as in article 15 um, received unsatisfactory conduct mark, received the mark of less than four in any performance dimension, received a negative administrative remark. Okay, and then you can um, look at that on CG form, Coast Guard form 3307, or been involved in any alcohol related incident. And I stress that in the um, other videos, you know, for the. Um, um, pathways to becoming a, a command commission officer in the Coast Guard and pretty much the standard is the is the same there's um, there's no variance so you got to keep your nose clean and have have an impeccable character but let's move on with the other requirements um, citizenship you have to be a US citizen um, and you must be eligible for a secret clearance okay uh, in regards to your dependents, okay, if you are single, um, you may not have sole or primary custody of dependents. That's that is their rules. So you need to make sure you have a plan and have that worked out. If you have um, dependents already, you know, um, going into this program, okay. Um, let's see. Also, may not have more than three dependents and this is saying if you these married married folks you can't have more than three and that does include your spouse even if she is in the military regardless of her military status or not you know the limit is three so basically you your spouse and a child are either you and well yeah it would have to be your spouse because this is for married people so you you your spouse and, a, and your ch and a child and that is the limit um education obviously you have to have at least a bachelor degree or higher from an accredited um, program. Now, for college seniors, um, you are eligible to apply if the following are met. Okay, your bachelor degree will be conferred prior to um, prior to your graduation date from um, the DCO course. Okay, and this is um, the time frame is approximately thirty days. Okay, um, for the first DCO course convening for which panel is making selections okay um the applicant provides and must provide an official letter from their college registrar registrar 
certifying their enrollment, their degree, um, what major they're in, their grade point average, and the anticipated date of graduation. Now, for those that have a foreign degree, um, applicants who have degrees from a foreign school, um, they have to include in their application a course-by-course -course assessment from an organization such as the Educational Credential Evaluators, and also in addition to that, the inclusion of, of the translation of their degree if a language other than English. Now, financial obligations, okay? You have to um, meet all your financial obligations and not have a debt to income ratio in excess of 80%, okay, of um, the future pay you will make as a commissioned officer in the grades of 01, 02, or whatever is applicable, okay? So make sure your finances are together. You cannot have filed for bankruptcy in the last 10 years. Um, if you have any student loans, the applicants must disclose um, to their recruiter um, any student loan, loan um, payments that are in deferment and also the anticipated date and amount of repayment of those loans. Okay. Um, for this program, um, PTMO applicants must receive the recommendation of a Coast Guard interview board, which will be administered by three Coast Guard officers. Um, military service, all right. Um, you have to have completed at least two years of commissioned active duty or reserve service in the United States Armed Forces or National Guard by the selection panel convening date. And um, you must have less than 10 years of non-Coast Guard active duty military service as of the commissioning date, which is equal to the date that the applicant, if you are selected, will um, take their oath of office, basically swear in as an officer in the Coast Guard. And if you're not currently in service, have a break of service that is less than four years from the date of discharge from active duty or reserve service in the United States Armed Forces or National Guard. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, moving on. Okay, Coast Guard officers. Okay, um, ADPL officers. All right, applicants currently holding a commission in the Coast Guard or Coast Guard Reserve who are on the active duty promotion list are not eligible to apply for this commissioning program. <coughs> Excuse me. And it would make sense because you already are a com you hold a commission already in this branch of service already, and you have a line number or a promotion number, so. Um, there's no need for you um, to apply. You've already made the grade already. So um, those that are on an active duty promotion list that are already um, commissioned Coast Guard officers, you're ineligible for this program because of those reasons. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, IDPL officers, those that you know are not on the promotion list. If a reserve officer on the inactive duty promotion list meets the eligibility criteria, he or she may apply for the program provided a conditional resignation that is approved by the Coast Guard P PSC RPM is included in the application package. And that right there um, is definitely um, going to involve your commanding officer having signed off on that. But they want to be sure that um, you um, basically resign, you know what I'm saying, under... Um, good conditions or good circumstances. Okay, commissioned officers who have been separated or removed from active duty from any branch of service as a result of non-selection for promotion, um, unable to extend um, your career in that branch of service or integration may not apply for any Coast Guard commission commissioning program and for conditional release. Okay, members currently in another um, branch of the military or um, an active reserve and Coast Guard reservists must furnish an approved DD form 368 which is a conditional release form and that will go in your you submit that with your package for this program but what that does that shows that you have been released from duty from the branch of service that you were serving in so that you can um, you know enter this commissioning officer program in the United States Coast Guard. Okay, 
Let's see. For a lease approval, okay, the lease um, shall be valid at a minimum through the date um, for which the panels, the panels of which the applicant is applying. Okay. Ideally, the release should be valid through the projected uh, session date for that panel. Coast Guard reservists, um, Coast Guard IRR, and other military service in active reserve. Um, recruiters will submit the DD Form 368 um, with only Section 1 complete to the um, Coast Guard RC um, Assessments Branch. And obviously, they um, have a link for that, which is, C Coast, is CGR um, SMB DD Form 368 at Coast Guard, US Coast Guard mil. Okay, Coast Guard active duty enlisted. Um, you don't need, obviously, a conditional release form because you're already in the Coast Guard. So you basically just need to um, have um, have to um, meet the qualifications and commander's recommendation approval to enter in to this commissioned officer pa um, pathway or program. Okay, members of other military services except um, the IRR. The applicant shall submit the DD Form 368 with Section 1 complete. Um, through their chain of command, okay, and um, their services authorizing official, which should be, your, it'll be your commander, okay, and um, they do say that it can be different for each branch of service, but normally it will be your commanding officer that will have to sign off on that, and once approved, the DD Form 368 and any other um, approved documents shall be submitted in the application package. Um, we get getting near the end, so now for the physical um, you have to have a uh, physical exam, so you must pass a commissioning physical to include normal um, color vision. Um, you have to meet height and weight standards for members of the Coast Guard. Um, you have to meet the height and weight standards under MAW, which includes body fat, um, per constants, um, M1020.8H. And you have to complete a structured physical fitness program while at the DCO school. Um, test score. There's no test score requirements for the um, PTMO. And getting close to the end, tattoos. Okay. Um, applicants that are applying for this, they may not have, um, applying for this program, may not have tattoos or body markings that are inconsistent with the Coast Guard tattoo, body marking, body piercing, and mutilation policy. So um, each branch has their, has their regs and the Coast Guard um, has theirs. So what might um, you might be able to get a little bit of breathing room with one branch of service with another another branch They may be more specific of where these tattoos and body on um, piercings are but generally speaking All branches normally they're within the same range of each other. They just have different regulations and If they decide if they deem that um, you need to have these tattoos removed then the Coast Guard won't pay for it You have to pay for it yourself to have them removed before entering um, this particular commission program. And lastly, the DCO pre-reporting guide. Applicants must have read and, and clearly understand the DCO pre-reporting guide. And pretty much, um, that is it, you know, for this particular, um, video. But this right here is for, um, prior trained military officers. So this is a pathway and it's also for enlisted also, but this is another pathway into the Coast Guard. And I will cover the um, health professional um, programs for those that want to become commissioned officers in, in the medical field in the Coast Guard. But that is it on this video. And thanks, guys, for your patience, you know, for listening. Thank you to all my subscribers. And again, um, this YouTube channel is Eric Broadus YouTube, E-R-I-C-B-R-O-A-D-U-S YouTube or EricBroadusYouTube.com. So please, um... Smash that bell to become a subscriber. Smash the like button to like the video and leave a comment. And if you don't like it, you're entitled to your opinion. You know, everybody has a right to be heard. And smash that unlike um, button and leave a comment. Love the dialogue with you. And I also have a podcast called Snacks Thoughts. S-N-A-K-Z-T-H-O-U-G-H-T-S. Snacks Thoughts. And you can find my podcast on Anchor, Spotify, Spreaker, Radio PPM, um, Apple Podcasts, um, iTunes, SoundCloud, Radio PBM, and a host of other social media um, platforms. So please push them out, share it, um, Snacks Thoughts, and also Eric brought us YouTube. Uh, share it with your family, friends, um, enemies, frenemies, cats, ghosts, bats, you know, push it out, share it, guys. 
All right. Thanks for um, watching and listening to this video. And I will see you soon on the next one. Peace, guys. Have a good evening.